it's time for a health report and joining us now is Africa 54 health correspondent Lino Mudu with an update on coronavirus. Hello Lino. Hello Esther. Uh, the coronavirus has claimed uh, more than 100 lives and over 4,500 cases have been confirmed in mainland China. And authorities say the outbreak of the virus is rapidly spreading in the country. Outside of China, several countries are reporting cases of the disease, including Thailand, Japan, the United States, Taiwan, Australia, France, Canada, and Germany. Africa reported its first suspected cases of the coronavirus when a woman in Cote d'Ivoire with flu-like symptoms was put under observation after arriving from Beijing on the weekend. A Kenyan student who flew home from China with coronavirus-like symptoms has been admitted at the hospital. Countries worldwide are stepping up screenings at border checkpoints to prevent the spread of the illness. There is no specific treatment for coronaviruses, a large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from the common cold to pneumonia. Experts say the first patient infected with the current outbreak of coronavirus acquired the virus directly from animals. Joining me live via Skype from Florida for more insight on the coronavirus is Sean Beckman, Assistant Professor of Biology at Stetson University. Professor Beck Beckman, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much for having me. There are several types of uh, coronaviruses. Uh, what are the particulars uh, regarding this one that came out of Wuhan? And uh, what makes it so severe compared to others? Uh, there's a number of potential factors that impact this. And we're still learning more and more about this virus every day, honestly, every hour as we study it. Uh, but anytime a new virus arises and crosses the species barrier from a non-human animal into a human, it has the potential to have devastating effects uh, because this is something that our immune system isn't used to. It, this isn't just the common cold. This is a new thing that our body hasn't seen before and has the seemingly the ability, at least initially, to avoid some of the immune responses that we would normally take on in the common cold. Given its respiratory nature and the fact that it's attacking the respiratory system, it has a lot of potential for difficulty with breathing uh, and various other respiratory issues that particularly in people that have respiratory issues to begin with or in areas that are prone to air pollution or are immunosuppressed are okay. going to be the ones that are most affected. Okay, so Professor Beckman, this is a, a zoonotic virus, just like the Ebola virus. How do people uh, protect themselves from vi viruses such as these? Uh, to be honest, it, it has a lot to do with where you are geographically. If you're within China right now, I think precautions are at a heightened level. Um, wearing masks is always a good idea. It can't prevent 100% infection, but it's your best bet. Uh, in addition, following good hygienic protocol, washing hands, um, not touching your eyes, touching your mouth, avoiding contact with people that uh, have respiratory issues, and if you're seeing symptoms yourself, seeking out medical attention immediately. How concerned should we be? We've seen the, in the past the MERS virus, the SARS, they're all coronaviruses. Now the Wuhan, how concerned should we be uh, with this one? Um, I think that it, a similar level of concern, which has been shown with previous, uh, the SARS and MERS were both great examples of this, of ca being cautious, being careful. There's a potential for spread of this. It seems like the majority of this is located within central China, although it is spreading out of there. Outside of China and outside of Southeast Asia, I think just following normal protocols and normal everyday life uh, hygiene and sanitation is good. But if you're in those particular areas, being at a heightened awareness and taking extra precautions is necessary. Okay, Professor Beckman, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And that was uh, Professor Sean Beckman, he is Assistant Professor of Biology at Staten University in Florida. Now, Dr. Anthony Fauci is Director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases here in the United States. He elaborates on lessons learned from the past, past outbreaks and the prospects of a vaccine to prevent transmission of the coronavirus. Take a listen. Yes, it's a combination of classic public health measures of containment together with the rapid development of diagnostics, therapeutics, and vaccines. Screening at ports of entry are helpful but not perfect. 
I mean, there's a lot of instances of people getting through the screening who actually are infected because you have an incubation period. There will be a vaccine if this turns into a pandemic. I can guarantee you that because we're working on it. But if it just dissipates and disappears the way SARS did, I don't think there will be enough time to make a vaccine. I hope that that's the case, that it's taken care of by public health measures and we don't have to have a vaccine. But if it becomes a serious outbreak globally, I can guarantee you that there will be a lot of effort to get a vaccine. I think that this is still a, a threat and we need to pay serious attention to it and take it very, very seriously. I mean, hopefully it will be contained, but it could turn into a global pandemic. And that's how I have report for today. Esther, back to you. Thank you so much, Leno. And be sure to watch Leno Mudu's health reports every Tuesday right here on Africa 54.